Okay. When you first turn on uh, the Hamilton ventilator, um, after you've completed uh, your circuit tests uh, and you've done all that stuff that we talked about previously, again, um, it's going to light up to this screen. When it comes up, uh, when the ventilator is done running through its cycle, it's going to come up to a home screen. And what's cool about the home screen is we were able to choose three modes of ventilation um, that we wanted to come up to make it easier for you guys to choose what mode of ventilation you need. What we did is we set this up so it'll come up uh, with CMV, which is assist control. This is the most common mode of ventilation that Allegheny is going to use. Um, ASV, which is adaptive support ventilation. That's the intelligent vent mode that uh, you know this ventilator um, is able to do. It's, pretty, it's a pretty unique mode. And then, of course, the NIBST, which I labeled as BiPAP on here. Um, and we're going to discuss all three modes uh, in, uh, in detail. One thing I wanted to point out is you do have to choose whether it's a male or female uh, when, you're, uh, when you're setting up your ventilator, and you do have to put in the patient's height. By doing so, what this will do, if you notice up here right now, the tidal volume is uh, a 450. Um, if I didn't adjust the height, it would stay there, but let's say that my height, I was only 62, or we'll say 60 inches tall. Um, notice it adjusts my height down to 300. What we did is we set the internal uh, machine to recognize, based on the patient's ideal body weight, we set it for 6 milligrams uh, per kilogram, which is ultra conservative. It's very lung protective. Um, and based on 50 uh, uh, kilograms of ideal body weight, if you multiply that by 6, you should get a, a tidal volume of 300. And that's, that's just a reference. So if you really don't know where to start your patient, if you put the, the appropriate parameters in right here, it'll give you a starting point uh, when it comes to your tidal volumes. So if you're going to go with uh, assist control, you just come down here to, if you want to stay with assist control, you just come down here to controls. And you can choose your rate. You push, turn, and confirm. Come over here to your title volume. If you want to take it back up to 400, push, turn, and confirm. Same way with your peep. Push, turn, and confirm. Um, and then your F5-2, uh, I'm going to turn that down uh, to 21%. Otherwise, our event will constantly alarm for us here. Um, and then the only other thing is Dr. Prumba uh, wanted us to use a flow trigger at 12. Um, that was kind of driven for some, from some other programs uh, to minimize the amount of uh, uh, auto cycling that happens with this ventilator. Although I feel that in the future we're going to be able to reduce that. So uh, we're going to go to 12 for now, uh, but we'll see um, how things go in the future. So after we get that all set up, we X out of here. We feel that uh, we're ready to go. We go ahead and hit start ventilation. And the machine's going to deliver, uh, the first breath is always a pressure controlled breath, um, just to see what kind of pressures it's going to take. What's unique about this assist control mode um, is it delivers the, um, the tidal volume at the lowest pressure possible, uh, breath by breath. Um, so right now, you notice that we're getting a, uh, a low minute volume alarm. What you can do, what's cool about this ventilator, is you can go into alarms, and you can hit auto. When you hit that auto function, it automatically sets your alarms uh, for that patient. Notice that the, uh, the low minute ventilation alarm went away. Um, and what's cool, you can manually set these alarms as well. You know, so if you wanted to come in here and you wanted to set your high pressure limit to 60, again, push, turn, and confirm. Um, I don't think there's much more to say about assist control. This is the basic mode of ventilation that uh, uh, Allegheny uses across our, our healthcare network. Um, if you go to monitoring, uh, you can go to a couple different things here. You can look at all your, your different parameters. Um, you can, a lot of this stuff is just your peak airway pressures um, and some terms that uh, may not be uh, too uh, exciting to the rest of you, but in respiratory therapy is some of the things that we like to look at. If you go to tools, um, you can go to um, configurations. You can do a couple things there. We really don't do anything uh, with the, the tool mode. If you touch this screen, you can go to waveforms. You can go to graphics. You can do a dynamic lung. So it'll actually show you your lung. Um, if your airway is tight on this lung, I can't mimic it, but what will happen is your, the, the tracheal bronchial tree will actually turn red, indicating you have bronchospasm. Um, if the lung uh, starts to light up at, at the bottom portions, it's indicating that you have a decreased lung compliance. Um, you might see that in patients with ARDS or somebody that is in acute bronchospasm or maybe uh, somebody that just has uh, significantly bad lungs. 
Um, this is a pretty common uh, screen that you'll, uh, people like to use. Um, and you can also do the vent status screen. The vent status screen is more for, again, for respiratory therapy than it is for us. <clears throat> Okay.